Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time. This is a response video to a YouTuber, booktuber, that I've just discovered, uh, and I think he's really good, and his channel is really interesting. I've had a little look at the rest of his channel, but I'm reacting to a specific thing he's put up, uh, which is about gatekeeping. So, um, his name is Oyston, um, and he's Nordic, and his channel is called Becoming a Bookworm. So check out his channel, it's really good. And basically, he was talking about how annoyed he is about the gatekeeping that happens on Booktube and, and his comment section, I think, a lot of it, because he gets criticised for what he reads, and probably in the book community, possibly. But I think it's a really interesting subject because it, it really, on the face of it, it, seems a bit obvious that why are you criticising someone else for what they're reading? But it's done in quite a subtle ways sometimes. I think it's an important thing to think about and to consider. Are you doing that yourself? And are you being um, less than tolerant or judgmental about what people are reading? Uh, when I'm assuming most people who watch these kinds of videos would just love people reading. They just like the fact that people are reading. Uh, reading is very good for you. Uh, and uh, besides the enjoyment factor, there's lots of other ways that it engages and enhances your brain and your life and your imagination and your capacity for uh, thinking and evaluating, problem solving, blah, blah, blah. Reading's got all sorts of different things that make it really important thing. And what you actually read is a separate issue and really it is completely subjective. It's just down to yourself and there shouldn't be any kind of gatekeeping. So the fact that um, uh, Oyston put this very short video up saying that um, he gets annoyed by this kind of thing and he gets these comments um, in his comment section saying, why are you reading that? Why are you not reading this? Blah, blah, blah. It's a bit of a problem. It's a bit, it's a bit annoying. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's about uh, not being judgmental. Um, and uh, he, he referenced a few things. So he, he is reading YA novels and he's been criticised for that. He's reading um, what he called TikTok novels. So they're clearly very popular novels that have, have had this sort of zeitgeist moment because of TikTok. And apparently you shouldn't be reading that according to some of the people commenting on his videos, which is really odd because um, if you look at his channel, by the way, he's reading all sorts of things. So he's, he's, he reads a lot of classics. He reads a lot of sorts of different things in different genres. This is not someone that's just picking these populist things. But I would have thought um, there'll be a lot of people that do read very deeply academic stuff uh, things that require a lot of thought, things that are multi-layered, and uh, things that have lot, got lots of nuance and, and uh, create uh, lots of um, opportunities to really think about an issue. I'm sure there's lots of people who read that stuff that would also be curious about the more popular stuff and like, well, what do I think about that? What is this thing people are talking about? Because ultimately, you know, uh, that's just as attractive as something that will engage your brain and get you thinking. Um, it's not necessarily just switching your brain off as well, by the way, because I do think sometimes um, the more really popular books do engage your brain as well. So I think that's a bit of a misdemeanor, 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 mis, uh, misdemeanor. <laughs> uh, so uh, misnomer. I think it's misnomer. I don't know. Um, I used to go out with someone called misnomer. No. Uh, so um, I do think that's a bit of a thing that people shouldn't be judging people if they're reading populist books, things, books that have got really popular over social media or whatever, that's not a problem. He also mentioned he's reading Harry Potter. And I think that's an interesting one as well because Harry Potter is something that, I think a lot of people think that is a part of the past. There's something that lots of booktubers grew up with and they're now, uh, in, like, maybe they're in their 30s and it's something that they appreciate, got them into reading, but um, they don't uh, want to talk about it anymore, or rate it anymore because of J.K. Rowling's attitude to the um, trans issue. So uh, a lot of people have kind of taken that position, I totally get that. But I also get why someone would be curious if they haven't read them before, go, well, everyone's talked about these books for 20 years, so actually I wouldn't mind reading one. I have never read any of the Harry Potter books. I've only seen the first four films. So my, my experience with Harry Potter is a little bit limited. I don't have a massive desire to read them, but I absolutely get why somebody would. And it's kind of like with, me, my, with this banned books project I'm doing. I'm, I'm curious to see what these books are like. 
and I don't expect to like them all. Uh, so far, I've been quite lucky, and I have liked them all, but, I'm, but I know there's going to be some I won't like, I would have thought. Um, but I'm reading them out of curiosity. Curiosity is the key to a good life, a happy life, an interesting life, and, and also an interesting kind of social perspective as well. And curiosity might mean you're reading something that you wouldn't necessarily read because you think you're going to enjoy it. It might be literally just reading out of curiosity. So that should be applauded, I think. I think that's a cool thing. And if um, people who didn't grow, they were not part of the Harry Potter generation, find out what this book, you know, what this book series is, um, out of curiosity, same with The Hunger Games, you know, um, I, I, I am going to read The Hunger Games at some point. I do want to read that. But again, I'm, I'm well late for the party, but who cares? I'm, a, I'm curious. I'm curious to know whether it's any good. You know, you know, I know what the, I've seen the films, I know what the plot is, but I'm interested to know whether I like the writing or not. So I think that, you know, there's nothing wrong with being curious about something that is in the, in the ether that everyone talks about. Uh, and I don't think people should be judging people on what they're reading. Uh, and, and I hate it when I hear some booktubers um, use the term entry level. <laughs> so that's something that's within, I've seen it within science fiction. So because I'm a big science fiction fan and I love science fiction to pieces, you'll see it a lot in my channel. Um, you get um, people saying, oh, well, that's just entry level science fiction. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, well, that's just, that's, that, that's not very, uh, that's not very hard science fiction or that's not, um, it's, it's too popular or it's written like it's going to be a film or things like that. And they just write people off and they write off incredible books like The Martian and they, they write that off as being entry level science fiction. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. It's good science fiction. That is a good book. And, uh, and, it's, and, and the fact that it's that enjoyable, if it's really enjoyable, that doesn't, shouldn't make it less v worthy, less, less uh, uh, valuable and, and worth praising. Um, but yeah, it seems to be that's the criteria. Because Andy Weir does his research. Uh, so, you know, this is not just, you know, I think entry level science fiction should really be science fiction that's really stupid. And The Martian's not stupid, he does his research. So anyway, that's a few thoughts on the gatekeeping thing. And uh, please let me know what you think below. And uh, yeah, shout out to that booktuber. Watch his channel, it's really good. Stay curious, everybody, and read whatever you want.